Hi, I'm Chunk, and I'm going to tell you about the neatest thing that ever happened to me and my Goonie friends. You can read along with me as I tell you the story. You'll know it's time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Are you ready? Me too. It all started one day when I raced over to Mikey and his brother Bran's house. Hey guys, I just saw the most amazing thing. There's this big cop chase and bullets were flying. Our friend Mouth was there too. Ah, he's making up one of his stories again. I was telling the truth, but nobody believed me. Mikey was moping around because it looked like all our houses in the goondocks were about to be torn down. I can't believe it. The Goonies will never be together again. Mouth tried to get us going. Come on, guys. This is our last weekend. We should have some fun. Hey, Mikey! What about all that stuff your dad's got in the attic? Mikey was fooling with the bag of marbles he always kept with him. We can't go up there. That stuff belongs to the town museum. But Mouth was already on his way. We followed. And a minute later, we were in the attic. In all the clutter, we found some pirate clothes and tried them on. Then Mikey found something else, a beat-up, faded map. It looks like a treasure map. And it's signed by One-Eyed Willie. Dad used to tell me about him, how this pirate hid his treasure in a cavern around here. Dad looked over Mikey's shoulder. Now that's old news. Everybody tried to find Willie's treasure a long time ago. Yeah. But if we could find the treasure, maybe we could save the Goondocks. Then we wouldn't have to move. Nearby, Dad found an old newspaper. Listen to this. Local miner Chester Copperpot missing. Was searching for fabled treasure. Hey, that guy was an expert, and he never came back. But that didn't stop Mikey. Our only chance is to try. Goonies never say die. We followed the map to this old restaurant. We huddled for a minute, and two Goonie girls, Andy and Steph, cut up with us. I peeked into the garage. It's that truck from the cop chase I was telling you about. It has bullet holes the size of watermelons. Just then, we spotted people coming out of the restaurant. Steph recognized them. That's the Fratelli mob. One of them escaped from jail today. After the Fratellis left, we sneaked into the restaurant. Mikey led the way. The map says the treasure is in the lowest spot. Let's head for the basement. It was dark and spooky down there. And worst of all, there was no food. Then we heard this growling, and it wasn't my stomach. We followed the sound to a room and looked inside. Chained to the wall was a big, ugly it. We ran out of there and stumbled into a dark, dusty room. Mikey pointed to a spot on the floor. This looks like the lowest point, but it's cement. How are we going to break through? Like always, Mouth had an answer. Just pour chocolate syrup on it and let Chunk eat his way through it. It made me mad. So I dove for Mouth, knocking over a water cooler. Mikey stopped cold. Look! The water's running down into that fireplace. That's the lowest spot. While everybody disappeared into the fireplace, I stayed behind and found the really important stuff. Ice cream. There was a whole freezer full. After a quick snack, I tried to join Mikey and the others in the fireplace. No, Chunk. Go get the police and hurry. I ran outside and flagged down a truck. When I saw who was inside, my heart did a flip-flop. It was the Fratellis. They tied me up, and Mama Fratelli started grilling me. OK, kid. We saw the bikes outside. Where are the rest of your friends? They're in the fireplace, honest. Stop your lying and tell us everything. So I did. I told him what I did in the third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. They just stared at me. Meanwhile, the other Goonies were down in a tunnel. Mikey found some miner's gear and candles. Hey, I bet this stuff belonged to Chester Copperpot. Then Andy found Chester. A skeleton! 
poor Chester had been crushed by a boulder. Mikey checked out the skeleton. I bet Willie set a trap that stopped Chester. Look, here's a copper medallion, and it matches the markings on the map. Looking at the skeleton, Andy freaked. She tore off down the passage and set off another one of Willie's traps. Mikey saw it coming. It's an avalanche! Run! Boulders crashed down all around them, and one blocked their way. Brand started shoving it aside. I hear something on the other side. The bats, watch out! Hundreds of bats burst through the opening. Up above, I heard the squeaking. The bats had flown back through the tunnel, and now they were coming through the fireplace. I turned to Mama Fratelli. See? I was telling the truth. She untied me. We gotta find the rest of those kids. Let's head for the tunnel. But first, put this one in with sloth. <laughs> sloth? What's a sloth, I wondered. Then I found out. The Fratellis tossed me in the room with the big, ugly it. <laughs> Down in the tunnel, Mikey followed the map to a waterfall. Look, the floor's covered with coins. Everybody started grabbing all they could carry until Mouth realized that the coins were new. We found a wishing well. Andy pointed to the ceiling. There's an opening. We can get out of here. But Mikey didn't budge. Don't you see how far we've come? Not even Chester got this far. This is our chance to find the treasure and save the goondocks. While they kept going, I was left with sloth. At first, I was scared, but then I found out that we both liked TV and we both loved food. Hey, Sloth, uh, you want a candy bar? He went crazy, pulling his chains right out of the wall. Then he set me free. Come on, Sloth, we gotta get the police. But he'd found the fireplace tunnel and was climbing in. Hey, Sloth! The gang was at a dead end. Mouth was having a tough time with Willie's clues. Copper bones, triple stones, westward phones. Mikey tried to figure it out. The copper is Chester's medallion. The foam is the ocean. But what about the stones? Hey, three stones sticking out of the wall. And the medallion fits right onto them. Dad coached Mikey. Now turn the medallion to the west. Mikey did, and the floor gave way. They tumbled down into a chamber where a big slab blocked away. Next to the slab, Mikey found the room's main feature. Look at this pipe organ. It's made out of bones. Mouth pointed to the map. Here, Andy, try playing these notes. When Andy hit a right note, the slab inched open. When she hit wrong notes, pieces of the floor caved in. Mouth was freaking out. One more note and we can squeeze through. Andy hit it and the slab opened. Zoom! They went sailing down a wild water slide and landed in a huge cavern. Mikey couldn't believe his eyes. It's Willie's pirate ship. Come on, let's look for the treasure. They climbed aboard and Mikey found a passage into a hidden room. And there it was, the treasure. There were jewels, glittering gold pieces, rings, necklaces, everything. Seated at the head of the huge table was the skeleton of one-eyed Willie. Mikey went up to it. Hi, Willie. We figured out all your clues. You know, you were the first Goonie. Pretty soon, the others were in the treasure room, grabbing everything they could carry. Dada reached for a pile of gold in front of Willie, but Mikey stopped him. That's his stuff. It might be another booby trap. Then Dada heard a noise. Someone's following us. We better get moving. Not so fast, kitty. Ah! It was Mama Fratelli. She and her sons were on the ship. Take the treasure and tie him up. 
They're going to walk the plank. <laughs> Mama Fratelli thought she had everything under control, but she'd forgotten about me and Sloth. Just as she was about to start walking the Goonies off the plank, Sloth cut loose with a wild scream and grabbed onto a nearby rope. I hung on to him for dear life. Let's go, Sloth! <laughs> we swung across the cavern and landed on the ship's deck. Get the weapons away from the Fratellis and I'll untie my friends. Bran dove off the ship. Everybody, jump! We did, the Sloth following close behind. But the Fratelli's greed got the best of them. They climbed back into the treasure room and grabbed Willie's stuff. All of a sudden, the whole cavern started to shake. Rocks were falling down all around us. We were lucky we weren't crushed. Bran led us into a tunnel. Man, it's dark in here. Dada, do you still have those candles? Dada checked his backpack. He found a candle and lit it. But then he noticed something. Hey, this is no candle. This is dynamite! As we dove for cover, a monster explosion rocked the cavern. The explosion left a huge boulder blocking the tunnel. Sloth lifted it to let us escape. We had survived. Our parents met us on the beach, and so did the cops. Sloth hauled the Fratellis out a few minutes later, and the cops swarmed all over them. Sloth was a hero. Mikey felt bad about not getting any treasure. I guess we won't be able to save our houses after all. Right there on the beach, some guy tried to make Mikey's dad sign away their house. That was when we found Mikey's marble bag. He'd filled it with jewels, then forgotten all about it. The goondocks were saved! Just then, as the sun came up, we saw a flash of white on the water. It was Willie's pirate ship, heading out to sea. Mikey held up the bag of jewels. Thanks, Ronald Willie. Goodbye.